Thank you for joining us wherever you are. This podcast episode is brought to you by the Old Ways Actual Play Team. This actual play uses the RuneQuest rules by Chaosium Incorporated. This actual play is performed by adults and in an adult setting. Strong language, mature scenes, and rune magics are on the way. As this is our Glorantha, we will remind listeners that it may vary from the one you already know and love. And now, on to the show. Thank you for joining us again on another episode of the Old Ways Podcast. I'm your storyteller, storyteller Michael. And we are back with our six seasons in Sartar campaign for the Old Ways Podcast. I'm joined by an amazing cast, which we'll get to introductions for shortly. Before we do, I'd like to remind you of two very important things. One, you can support the show. If you like RuneQuest especially, you can support the show at Patreon. Patreon.com slash the Old Ways Podcast. You can join us over on YouTube, which would be certainly helpful. Subscribe for all the updates. And the other thing I'd like to remind you of is that our Glorantha is going to vary from yours, especially the one you know and love. And that's because, as is tradition, your Glorantha will vary. Now, I'll begin with introductions to my right. Hi, I'm Heather, and I am playing Lysana, daughter of the healer Nyana Call of the Highwater and granddaughter of Lathara, who rode to meet Kai Torakek in the glory of the Feathered Horse Queen. All honor and praise to the blood that binds us all and the earth that keeps us. And to Heather's right. I am Morgan, and I play Alara, daughter to Kelvin, farmer, and Ariana, assistant shaman of Hillbase Stead. Fantastic. At the end of the table. This is Jake. I'm playing Vargast, son of Gordon Ast of the Trice Blessed. And last, most certainly not least. Hi, this is James, and I'll be playing Garifin, son of Kolar of Hill Base Stead, a rapscallion and, you know, river entrepreneur. So when we last parted the veil and looked at our Hariborn, they were preparing for an auspicious occasion. There is a wedding that has been planned and is moving forward with now, and they have been gathering all sorts of things, their little tasks to help this happen. And so as we look in on them, it appears now that the ceremony and the processional is going to begin. We have heard very recently that Vargas is coming down from Stag Hill, and he is bringing with him Dindros who had, uh, well, we'll just say a a little bit of libations up there and along the way. Uh, But they reach Hill Base, and they, you, Jake, character is able to usher Dindros into place. This does take a little bit of work to keep him upright, you understand. Uh, He swears many times, and to many of the gods that... um, he will be perfectly prepared when Janira arrives. He does a lot of nodding as well. I believe that when I see it. So with Alara and Fim, the two of you are able to see this process begin. People start arriving. And most of them go not to the tables, but they go on the outer section where the ceremony is going to be formed. Not in the stead directly, but just outside of it, on one of the Vale's many smaller hills. It will give a wonderful view of the Vale as its backdrop and a nice, firm place for many, many people to stand. Finn, you're a little concerned and a little excited because it looks like there are far more people than you thought would be here. I mean, there already there must be. 50 people waiting. Oh, that's a lot of people to introduce myself to. And Alara, after having returned from the river with Finn, you do manage to catch sight of both of your parents trying to finalize some of the last uh, items. They too have seen this space outside the stead proper where all of these fellow Haraborn are gathering. And they look a little concerned about the 
number of places people were going to be able to sit. And of course, the food. I go over to them. But what do you need me to do? Alara, there you are. Where have you been? Oh, um, I immediately start trying to fix my hair and before my mother gets a hold of it. Um, Finn and I were getting more seats or sets. <laughs> mm, I see. Playing around at the river with Finn again. Mother, I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't fooling around at the river. Really? She steps closer to you. Are those flower seeds I smell on you? She grabs your hands like at the wrist. Hmm. Yes. You've been playing with flowers. She smiles. Now, what should have you been doing? Seeing what you needed done. Yes. Helping keep this in order. All of these things, all of these things matter. Yes, mother, you're right. I just get carried away when I when I hang out with Finn. Yes, it's that Finn boy. He's not like the others. Oh, mother, he's he's quite nice. He's not full of himself like some of the other boys are. Yes, well, well, Anthony men tend to be full of themselves. It's gotten us into more than a few points of trouble over the years. But remember, we must teach them there is always another way. And like, you hear her start the sentence, the, the ultimate Arnalda mantra, right? There is always another way. These are the words that she, the goddess spoke to Orlanth when there were troubles. There is always another way. And it's hard for you not to hear your mother's the full sentence complete before she even gets it out of her mouth. Oh, I, I know, Mother. As you, as you have told Father quite often. Well. You provide excellent guidance for Father. She smiles and gives you a very slow nod. We are going to collect the food and prepare the feast table. That is what you and I will do now. It may mean we miss a little bit of the ceremony and perhaps some of the procession, but we are doing our part. Alara starts to look a little crestfallen because she really wanted to see the, the wonderful ceremony that she hopes to have one day. But immediately snaps back into, into the moment. And, yes, mother, whatever you need me to do. She tasks you with assisting her in preparing the feast table. She tells you that if we can prepare it properly, we may yet get to see the ceremony. I immediately get to work. Okay. So, Heather, the procession from your stead, from Cliff Shield, is a march north. And the wonder and magic of it is something to behold. Janira, she does not lead the procession. She is at the back, in a place of honor. Before her, many of the women of not only Cliff Shield, but of Red Rock, the stead to the south, which you are fairly close with, those women are preparing the path for her. And they're doing so by singing and chanting songs to Arnaldo's praise and in a way sowing those seeds into the ground for the object, the, the goddess on earth, that personification that Janera is playing today. And in many ways, this is a pomp and circumstance. There, there, is, there is the performative nature of this but as your mother and so many mothers of the veil have said, this is how we exalt the mother that gives us life. And you watch that play out in her procession, whether it is younger girls with streamers and ribbons to dance through the air, whether it's wonderful perfumes and scents that are placed into the air, everything is trumpeting for Janira. And it isn't too terribly long before the rest of you 
at Hill Base begin to hear the arrival. And for you, Finn, this is truly something auspicious because you've you've never really seen a marriage ceremony up close. You know that they've happened in the north and at Veilgate in the far south, but you didn't really get invited to one. But for you, this is coming directly home. Like this is this is coming home to you. Oh, Finn drinks up the carnival atmosphere then. And uh Maybe since he doesn't see Alara there yet, he um, maybe saves just a couple of choice baked treats and just a little wine off to the side, you know, for Alara, just in case when she shows up, sec- secrets them away. Yeah, and you get a chance to see Dindros. Um, you know him. He, he's of your stead. He's, <clears throat> well, maybe in your opinion, a prototypical Paraborn or Lanthi male. He's a little full of himself. He can probably back some of that up. He is handsome and beams with energy on most days. He's also well known to have violent mood swings when things don't go his way. Uh, Finn, um, when he has just, I mean, uh, he knows that he's, of course, incredibly busy, but when he has just a second, Finn throws out a big handshake and a, a very wry smile. Well, it uh, looks like you've decided to choose your battle and when it's going to happen, so that's fantastic. Not many soldiers get to do that. He, he gives you uh, a smirk and sort of a nod and says, uh, this is um, this is all going to be just amazing. Just you wait. You see, he has something over his shoulder. He has a... Um, well, several layers of green cloth that have something at the center of them. It looks like a really big belt. It's the best way I can explain it. And at that big center of the belt, there is a, this there is this symbol. It's a runic symbol, one you're familiar with. It's a fertility rune. It's a, it looks like a sort of an hourglass shape. Finn kind of brushes some dirt off of the off of the the girdle. Well, is it? Th- this just split. You're going to look absolutely gorgeous in this. He smiles. Where did you come by this? Was it, um, I'm assuming it was cheap in the marketplace? He sort of shifts his gaze to you, like, directly. Mm. And he pats the belt lovingly. This is for the woman who will mother my children. I left this earth during sacred time to find a gift fitting for her. And this is what I found. Well, it is more beautiful than a season of sunrises, I must say. And definitely befitting a beauty such as your intended betrothed. I can't wait. And yet... He seems genuinely like taken with the, like, the feeling of love. He's likely a little intoxicated still, but, you know, he gets like on the precipice of sappiness just for a moment. But Finn clasps his shoulders and claps them once. Big smile. He says, hey, this is a big day. You have many things to feel and many things to do, but you can't stick around for one thing. What's that? (laughs) Any one thing. Have you seen how many things are going on? You should be in a hurry. He sort of looks around a little bit. So, Jake, you're watching this exchange, and you know the stories about Finn. Finn the fisherman. Finn the claymaker. Finn the troublemaker. Doesn't really gel with many of the rules that your father keeps in the Vale. Some say he's got a little too much of Orland's wind touch, but you're not really sure he's a little too, I wouldn't say chaotic because chaos is not something we want to objectify, at least not amongst the people of the heroine. But you can see that he's talking in the ear of Dendros and it looks like whatever he's saying to him, it's having some sort of effect. Not a good one. All right, I'll, I'll approach Dendros on the other side. Okay. 
So do do me a favor, Jake, if you would give us the full the full Monty description of Vargas as far as how he looks appears to the rest of the folks. Dendrus is a giant of a man. He stands 6'7", 280 pounds. Short, dark hair, a uh, beard, and a uh, long hair and, uh, and braids. And dark eyes. He, he's a beast. So, Finn, Vargas approaches you, and clearly you see him coming. This is likely another Orlanthi warrior that could probably eat rocks for breakfast. Hail and well met, friend. Hail. Dendrous. Huh? It's about time we make sure you're in the right position. I'm sure the uh, the procession will be here soon. Yeah, I can hear him. I can hear him. Yeah. You want to be you want to be in your best posi- best uh, look for uh, your betrothed. Mm, yes, yes. Ah, oh, there's just uh, there's just so much going on. Finn smiles again, kind of shrugs. See, I told you you should be busy. <laughs> he kind of smiles and hefts his sack of goodies, looks around, looks at uh, Vargast, kind of looks him up. Well, you are just the shadow of a mountain, aren't you? <laughs> so they say. Finn sticks out his hand. Garifin. Yes, uh, I'm quite aware of who you are. Your reputation precedes you. The smile doesn't leave, but the hand slowly retracts backward. <clears throat> well, uh, welcome to Hill Base, and uh, well met, friend. Pulls out a chunk of one of the baked goods, offers it to Vargast. Why, thank you. We'll have to share a couple of uh, cups later on. Oh, absolutely. I, I look forward to it. I'm I'm uh, looking for someone right, uh, actually, uh, he kind of points, I'm looking for someone in the, um, she's probably going to be needing me to, and then he attempts to disappear into the crowd as he's currently incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, this this isn't something you're unfamiliar with, Vargas. People do tend to get uncomfortable around you. Those who are perhaps shorter in stature, they do tend to marvel at your um, size. Well, what can I do? Unfortunately, almost everybody is shorter in stature. It's true. The ground near the ceremony site begins to shake a little. You are treated, Heather, you are treated to a type of dance you're not familiar with. The women of Red Rock, some of them supposedly did uh, perhaps a, a, a bit of research on some of the dances to Israelia, country to the south, one dominated by priests of Rinalda. And they're dancing in rhythm and in time as they arrive, and they're shaking the ground as they move forward as a sort of final announcement of the arrival. And this is when all of the additional people who are here to view the ceremony start getting into a uh, position to watch this arrival. But before that happens, I would like Lara to make a managed household role to see if she can get this feast set up. And because it's her parents assisting her, I'm going to give her a plus 20 to this role based on the amount that they're spending to put the feast on. Wonderful. All right, so can I roll for runic inspiration, please? Certainly. How would you utilize, this is likely the earth rune, how would you likely utilize it to draw that inspiration? Well, since the earth is rich with life and gifts, you know, preparing this feast would be giving life to a whole new generation of clan members. And I'd like to utilize that runic inspiration of Earth to help guide me and create the best feast possible. Yeah, so go ahead and roll your Earth rune. I get a 17 out of 60. Okay, so not a special, definitely a success. Special would have been 12. 
So that is a success. You're going to add 20% to the ability being augmented, right? So you're going to take the roll you're going to make for managed household. You're going to add 20% from the amount of investment from your parents. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to add another 20% from your runic inspiration. And you're going to roll. Oh, so I roll again? Oh, yes. Oh. All right. So if we're adding 40% altogether, that would be 85 for my base. And then I rolled a 58. Okay. That's a good class. So the great part of what you do is you become inspired by the future and what the earth can potentially bring you and Dendris and Janira in the wedding to come and their lives to come. And you get in rhythm with that rumble that is coming your way. You feel the flow of the processional without even seeing it. The earth hums beneath your feet and it moves your arms and limbs in ways you were not expecting. And you prepare the feast in almost a rhythmic way. The placements of cups and plates and foods and the cutting of vegetables and all the things that you begin to do, the preparation therein. And before you know it, your mother is tapping you on the shoulder. And she says, well done, child. Let's go enjoy the ceremony. Yes, mother. All are assembled and the procession arrives in Hill Base. And it is like watching a conquering queen come home. The dancing women form a bulb around the inner portion of the ceremony. They file and fill in and a confident and one might even say prowling Janira arrives. Beautiful, ample breasts on display, painted green with beautiful rune work touched into her skin. She arrives and the people of Hill Base cheer. It is as if a conquering hero has arrived. And Dendros is flabbergasted, totally blown away by the display. And at the proper time, your father, Jake, takes a position near the bottom of this bulb that they've made of bodies. And he waits. And when all due deference is given to the processional and to Janira, Morgana, the high head priestess of Rinaldi here for the Hairborn, all she simply does is makes a very calm gesture with her hand, a single one, and the, the sounds of the procession sort of fade into the background. You start seeing, those of you who are here, you start seeing one by one very important faces. Not only is Gordangar, the chieftain, the head of the ring here, not only is Morganath, the head of Rinaldo's priestesses here, but also the one they call Copperax, an era of Copperax, a bear fallen, the rare priestess of Babista Gore. She sits cross legged, not stands, sits cross legged on a stone nearby, carefully waiting, happy but purposeful. It is said that the priests of Babista Gore are intently interested in watching men take oaths in case they fail to uphold them. Jody Whiteheart of Riddle Watch is here, your Lancarmine sage, and uh, Keladon Blue Eye, the chieftain's bonded Ramali trickster, is here. He has some strange animal with him. Climbs around his body. Looks like a flying squirrel, perhaps. And then Borkar. 
Son of Gudin of Riddle Watch. Golden Tongue and Merchant. That is your merchant, one that brings you all sorts of goodies from lands afar. And stories, probably, as well. Porkar is the one who speaks first. He invokes Asarius to bind these two souls with his passing. And orders them, order is a strong word, directs them to hold hands for the rest of the ceremony. Morgana, blind woman, that head priestess of Rinalda, steps towards the two. And as she carefully and calmly moves towards them, she raises both of her hands and calls for Rinalda to bless the both of them and keep them whole so they may join each other in a true union. Several of these elders of the village speak up, each affirming the ceremony is right and proper to continue. White calls for Lankarmai to make the ground steady that they walk on. They may always not only be fertile, but that that fruit may pave the way for the future. And then things go a little quiet. And your father looks at you. He says, where's the cotter? He assured me he would be here. Another few moments pass. There is a movement at the back of the ceremony. And you see a, an older man, perhaps in what we would believe are his late 40s or perhaps early 50s. A man of wild clothing steps into this circle. This is a cotter. Most of you would know that. You wouldn't know this one specifically, but Jake, you eye the cotter you spoke with earlier in the day. And he has a sack over his shoulder. And he says, I'm here at the call of our chieftain. He steps further forward. He places the sack on the ground. I ask you all to remember those you do not see, those that help you live and work, those who feed you. While we may not have the longhouse or the bronze sword, what we do have is a bounty, and we share it with all of you. And he opens the sack and you see that there are a series of loaves of bread and other uh, looks like there's dried meat in there as well and he says as is my station i share my food and i would ask that you not forget us and in a very traditional way jake your father steps forward and places a hand on the cotter's shoulder and says, no matter your station, I pledge we will never forget you. We will always defend you and those who live within this veil. There seems to be a affirmation amongst many of the people, Dindros amongst them. You hear a cheer from the back and Kellen Blue Eye has clearly already been imbibing and he says, are we going to get drunk or what? And people look at him and he makes a face at them and your father just rolls his eyes. Levity, levity, your Molly calls out. You're all so tense. Have some fun. Spins around a few other people and then out of sight. Jake, your uncle Savan enters the circle after the cotter leaves, having left his bounty for those here. You see him raise his hands to the sky and he calls out to Orlan to bless this union with rain as those who walk under the middle air must have fertile ground to lay and plant seeds in. He calls for the marriage to be protected by all who see it witness. Stand together, Savan says, one hand on Dindros, 
the other hand to the sky. For two are better than one. Life is short, while time is long. Life flees before us as a stone that rolls down the hill. Take what you hold and make use of it. Help carry our clan through this age and into a better one. Just the lightest bit of rain begins. Many of the Ronaldin priestess are beaming with excitement as rain on a wedding day is an enormous bounty. Your mother speaks up, Heather. Okay. She comes to the fore and says, May Ernalda construct the womb. May Orlanth fabricate the member. May Flamal sprinkle the seed as your eye binds thy love. Together we invoke this union which the earth and air have brought to us in this place. And with Bontar's blessing, may the fields you share bring their bountiful yield in the coming seasons. And with that, Dindros extends this gift of green, this relic lost to the Hariborn, and assists his new wife in wearing it. And it's at that point, Morgan, your father calls out and says, we have a feast prepared. Please come and accept Hillbase's bounty. And music starts up from all, all over the place, different little wood instruments and strings, and people move deeper into the stead for a feast. And so I'll ask all of you, what's the one thing you want to do at this wedding feast? I'll start to my right. Lasana will first, she'll want to dance. She's young, she's 16. She has all of her festival finery on. Her mother being the healer of of uh, Cliff Shield, very, probably fairly well known mm-hmm. in throughout, even throughout the Hariborn especially because of the infamous nature of her grandmother. So (laughs) there's a little bit of a notoriety with the family. And as young as she is, this is a joyous occasion. She will probably imbibe a bit, even, uh, even as she's younger, but she will want to dance and be in the midst of all of the celebrations, probably praising Donadar and looking as pretty as possible to see whose eyes may be that she catches. Fair enough. Fertility were a ruin there doing hard work, I'm certain. So I'd love to know, Alara, what, what you would do during this ceremony. Now that all the hard work's done, right? Like the, the prep work is all done. You played a huge role in it, and you're getting to see all of the benefits of all your hard work. What's where's where's your mind at? Well, she would have changed as quick as possible after the ceremony to something that was less or something cleaner than what she was because she went right from the river to mm-hmm. getting everything ready. Um, so she would probably be wearing a, a bright yellow dress of some sort and her hair clean and freshly braided. She's got, you know, her tan skin and bright eyes. She's going to start her 18th year in a few seasons. And so she is watching the crowd. She doesn't dance very well. She's pretty to look at and then she can maybe charm her way out of certain situations. But um, yeah, she just stands and kind of sways herself to the music and and, and hums and just and just watches the crowd. Everybody seems to be having a good time, and which means she's having a good time because she can feel that that happiness and the energy. She looks around for Finn and he's probably talking up some random person from the, the inner ring. And so she knows she'll hear all, all about it later because he does love to gossip. 
Indeed he does. Yeah, I have a feeling that the social butterfly of this little group uh, could be could be more than a few of you, but given there's so many different people here, um, I'm sure that Finn is up something. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. But what I want to know is, Jake, does, does being the chieftain's son mean you're not allowed to have fun? How do you view that? Well, I, you know, I want to have fun. I want to have some drinks, do a little dancing and singing, but I have to be aware that eyes are on me and likely judging me in what I do. So I have to be very, I have to kind of be a little withdrawn, not, not get as deep into the cups and the frivolity as everyone else. Yeah, there's, there's probably some deference given to the amount you'd be able to imbibe like at a a, a wedding. Um, it wouldn't be uncommon for all of you to already be drinking pretty regularly uh, simply because you're in a place that many of the steads brew their own mead. And while that's generally brewed just for them, beer or mead, uh, you get wine in from some traders. The sticky part about the veil and the Hariborn is that you are doing your best to stay out of sight because of the, well, the cloud that hangs over everybody, which is the fact that you're currently living underneath the lunar rule, even if it is done from someone who's a Sardarite. But true opportunities to celebrate like this are very rare. And so you'd probably even see many of the women and many of the men of these steads enjoying them. Probably some of the inner ring folks like your father and some of the other um, notables are probably dialing it back a little bit just because they want to let other people enjoy it because they have a sense of duty and honor. So if you take that sort of stance, um, at some point, your father will come over to you and say, the future is very uncertain. I wish I could say it wasn't. You should do what you can to enjoy these times as they arrive. Soon enough, you'll be, you'll be required to choose. Your time of initiation will draw near and your dedication to Orlanth and this clan will be made concrete. Of course, Father. I mean, and I do owe Finn a couple of cups. Certainly. You may owe him more than that in short, because I can just tell you that tricksters, people who enjoy playing jokes, are not generally under Orlan's purview. He leaves them just as he left me, Galadon. It would not surprise me if Orlan made his way into your ear about such an agreement. So you'd be aware, Jake, that your father has effectively a, an agreement with Orlanth to care for Caledon Blue Eye. And by care for, essentially that means protect him from getting in trouble. Becomes sort of a stabilizing force to somebody who's dedicated uh, to Ramali, the trickster god. The benefits are, is uh, for the most part, Galadon has um, dimmed a little bit, a little bit more, not controllable is the wrong, the wrong word, but maybe a little bit more appreciative of not saying the wrong thing 100% of the time <laughs> to the wrong person 100% of the time. Maybe that's like a 75, 70, 80% thing, but there is an important relationship that you would understand between those two gods, both light bringers. And the trickster has his role, just like Orlanth does, just like, I mean, not as important as Orlanth, of course, to you, but clearly there, there are places for each of those people. 
an important but lesser role. Certainly. I mean, he's not the king of the middle air. It's, right. That's the way it is. But it's a role. Right. So I, I do want to know from you, Finn, um, how, how are you coping with all of the, well, I guess maybe discord is the way to think about it. There's an awful lot of different voices here. Not all of these people really get along all the time. Uh, Finn. Oh, Finn is absolutely loving that. Uh, and in fact, not, not only is he the gossip mill, you know, the, the rumor that Finn loves to hear stories of what's going on, gossip, who the tea as it were. Um, but he also does love to make things in the village as lively as possible. So while he's here and there are all these people that are in their cups and and, and about with all these other people, if he hears a, a juicy a juicy rumor that he knows would would probably eventually start some shit between two other people that are not related to him. He is not going to hesitate to accidentally drop that into the seat of conversation. Okay, so give me a listen roll. I absolutely will. That is an eight on the die. So uh, okay. communication, my listen is eight under 35. Okay. You pick up on a pretty juicy piece of gossip, at least so you think. Evidently, there are plans to continue delivering foodstuffs, rations, to a certain place north of Too Blessed. And the reason why it's juicy is you hear that these important rations are being delivered to help support rebellious Sardarite activities under lunar rule. So pro lunar Sardarites? No. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Oh, oh, rebellion against the lunar empire. Uh, these are Sardarites who are a rebellion yes. versus the lunar empire. Uh, keep in mind, oh, in, yeah. in the current timeline, Sardar has already rebelled right. under Collier Starbrow and f it failed. Right. But another rebellion. Oh boy, Finn is all abuzz now. He, he uh, scans the room immediately for two people. One, uh, Alara, because he has to tell Alara, oh my God, he can't keep this to himself. And the other is, uh, where's that Where's that stoic cliff face of our guest at that he, he met earlier? <laughs> Certainly. He finds Alara first, of course. Uh, well, you do. Yeah. She's dancing. Um, <clears throat> may I cut in, please? She's not dancing with anybody in particular. Oh, she, that's right. She's just kind of swaying <laughs> back and forth. Okay, then then Finn literally appears in front of her and starts swaying back and forth in time like he was dancing with her. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Oh. <laughs> he has the look on his face. No, no, no. Here. <laughs> look. Hmm. Yes. I think there's another rebellion going on. You can't say that stuff out loud like that. that. That's just, that's unheard of. Okay, well, it's not unheard of. But. Oh, I, I, I've heard of it. I've been hearing about it every day since I could, you know, figure out what the sounds they were making at me meant. And if, if it, if it works, imagine, just imagine that. Come on. With me. But. He takes a wistful look at the ceiling. Oh, are you imagining? I'm imagining us being in trouble for even talking about this. That's true. Unless but what we did you had, hear? Uh, well, he regales exactly what he heard and from, not necessarily exactly from who, but, you know, well, I heard from, well, let's just say someone here, that there are provisional supplies going up north, uh, going up north of Twice Blessed for us, for an anti-lunar rebellion. Hmm. He says that part very quietly. He does, he's not trying to draw attention. He's just trying to get across exactly how excited he thinks that is because he knows that Alara will find that absolutely like, because he knows that it, what he likes to fish, Alara likes to think of ways that 
you know, lunarites could fall downstairs. I wonder what kind of rebellious activities they are planning. So far, all I know is the eating kind, but I mean, you know, <laughs> soldiers march on their bellies. Well, the more we can, the more we can stick it to the Lunar Empire, <clears throat> the better. Okay, there's somebody else I have to find. Um, oh, by the way, here, and he shoves like uh, like the baked thing that he, you know, absconded with earlier for <laughs> one of the things. Here, I got this for you earlier. Um, I took a bite because I was hungry. I'm sorry. I'll be right back. And he zips off into the crowd. I look down at my hands to this crumbs and mess all over my, well, all over the hands. It's got a bite mark in it. And Okay. And I just put it on the table next to me right now. And I continue swaying. Okay. Um, finding Vargas is not hard. By any means. Towers above everyone. I looked for the scenic vantage point and head towards that. <laughs> and on my way, make sure I grab an extra cup. I won't say appear next to him, but it's one of those where Vargas looks away and then suddenly I'm standing to his left and offering him a cup. Ah, then. Huh, funny. I have an extra cup for you. All right. Well, um, I, I guess we both have, we have two cups now. Well, I guess we'll just, I'll just keep these two, you keep these two, and we'll pretend we swapped. How about that? That works for me. So, heard anything interesting recently? Takes a half a swig. No, not really. Mm. Yeah, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's unfortunate. Another sip. You can, even someone who doesn't know Finn can tell that Finn is practically bursting to say what he wants to say. <laughs> but it's part of the game. It's part of the game. I have a feeling you've heard something interesting. Oh, I have. And I'm glad that you brought it up. Okay. So uh, I hear that there are actually, hmm, there are provisional supplies headed north by Twice Blessed. And it's for a, um, a rebellious, an anti-lunar rebellious faction. Have I heard anything about this? You know, you haven't. Well, that's interesting. That's, in that's quite interesting. Somehow, I thought you might find that fascinating. Yeah. I really do. Where'd you hear this from? Um, let's just say that at a party, the only mouth open wider than one of these cups are generally the people enjoying them. He sloshes a little wine over the side on accident. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe I've had a little too much. <laughs> Takes another sip. <laughs> I need to find out more about this. Well, I can definitely keep my ear open if you'd like. Yeah, why don't you do that? Because, uh, if there's a rebellion go um, starting up, I'd be interested in maybe helping out here and there. Hmm. Well, I'll um, I'll definitely see what I can. I, if I hear anything, I'll 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 find you. Yeah, do that. And back into the crowd, Finn goes. Fair enough. So the ceremony lasts. Uh, reasonable while it, it, the ceremony lasted not nearly as long as the feast will last so the feast goes all the way into the night and into the wee hours many many cups are had by those who enjoy them um, but before we wind down um, have the characters approached by Morgana okay while you are enjoying the just a brief respite from the dancing circles and the drums and everything else going on. Feeling highly inspired and all connected and giggling mm. and still making sexy side eye to the largest men, manly men in the in the area, which I'm sure is probably Vargast. It could be. It could be. He seems very stoic, which is a little odd 
for a, a, a Norlanthi man, but at the same time, he seems to be trying to enjoy himself. Well, I would know he would. I would have an idea that he's like the chieftain's oh, yeah. son. I mean, I mean, he's <laughs> yeah. known. So he's it's known. not entirely surprising, but it's very tempting to go up and try to see if I can convince him to loosen up a little bit. Storyteller mm-hmm. Mike, uh, if, if at any point in the evening she is on the floor dancing, you know, getting her uh, getting her sway on and such, uh, if I could accidentally bump Fargast into her, while they're dancing, totally on accident, it would be. You're, well, it would just be fantastic. You're going to lose that size <laughs> to strength ratio when it comes to bumping Vargas. Oh, I, I meant more of a like a, oops, I'm drunk, thud. Why don't you ask the mountain to move? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that that sounds fun. <laughs> um, so there is dancing going on, mm-hmm. and you do accidentally get. Um, bumped into um, a little bit Um, but you recover but during the recovery Borgast you see Lasana and you just take a moment just to sort of you know check her out because she's she's out here just like any of the other younger women that you're, you're sort of within your age range and while you are you're taking a, a drink, um, you get bumped into from behind. So I think this would be sort of fun to do as a um, an opposed roll. I'd like to have Vargas roll strength, but I'd like to allow Finn to roll dexterity and do them up sort of in, a, in an opposed way to see if he can slink in beside you and and get you off your game enough. Okay, uh, what do we roll for that? So, um, what we would do is you're going to roll your ability times five. So, you're going to take your strength and you're going to multiply it by five and make it into a percentile. Same thing that James will do with Finn. He'll take his dexterity, multiply it by five, and then roll it as a percentile. I have a seven under 80. Uh, I have a four under 85. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So, so we'll play this out, right? Um, Finn, you bump into Vargath and you think you have him and the, <laughs> the the mountain himself does move but steadies himself. For you, Osana, Vargath comes at you, like unexpectedly at you. And you get sort of this full measure of his size as he's that close to you. There's just this little spark of something in you. She takes for a quick moment, obviously, to see this very large, muscular, handsome chieftain's son uh, come very quickly Towards her, so there's there is a moment of a little bit of concern because sure. he would he would he could he could do some damage and not in a good way. It should he just run right through her? Um, but when she realizes he is just standing there, she gets a very mischievous grin and glint in her eye and be, resumes dancing. Yet this time. The sensuality level is raised and the she closes distance so she is close to him. And then she pull lays out her arms as she weaves them towards Vargas in an invitation to join her. Well, I can't exactly say no to that. No, you can't. Finn rejoins uh rejoins uh Alara on the edge of the dance floor. Okay, so here's what I'm going to ask as sort of a, um, a wonderful, graceful coda to this ceremony. Vargas, why don't you roll dance for me? Mm. <laughs> Same with you, Nasana. 720. Oh, good. And remember, we're in a session, so you could technically roll for runic inspiration. 
if you wanted to maximize your potential for dance. I would like to do that. Okay. Please, again, take think, me through. Yeah, absolutely. So what you're doing is you're calling on a specific rune to be inspired by. Oh, uh, definitely the earth, the earthiness, mm. the, uh, the, the sexuality from the womb that permeates through. Okay. All right, so the allure of what makes uh, the earth up, right? The the readiness, the preparedness, um, sexuality, and stuff like that is going to be probably a little closer to fertility. But um, perhaps, perhaps what I would say then is um, deciding that you are attempting to show them that that you're prepared um, to dance rhythmically. Lysana will within her mind uh, call upon uh, primarily she'll have the, the the sense of calling upon Eularia, the goddess of love. Oh, okay. So with earth and water are both of her runes so to not since she's not necessarily looking to get knocked up she is <laughs> looking to have a good time and call upon the sensuality of love okay so i'll, I'll let you roll your earth rune for inspiration in that okay. okay so i have earth at 60 yep so you need to roll into that That is a 56, so underneath. Successful, so that is 20% to your dance roll. Okay. And now you'll have to see if you can, um, you know, do -si do as well as your partner here. So I need a 45 or under. Mm -hmm. And that is a 13. Okay. The two of you have a inspired dance. Uh, unfortunately, it lasts for about 60 seconds until your father's voice, Vargaf, pierces the say the reverie and says, Son, we're going home. Of course, Father. The two of you have those fleeting, parting glimpses at one another. I will give a the facial expression will be, well, you know. Aww. And I will caress, use my hand in a gesture to caress his cheek down his very ample chest just enough as I keep lock, keeping my eyes locked on him as I j undulate back into amongst the other revelers. Okay. It gives you something to remember the feast by, that's for certain. You haven't had a whole lot of direct one-on-one -on -one contact with women at, in that regard, Vargath, but you're doing what you're told. You're, you're following orders. That's probably best for the moment, at least long enough for you to get your heart rate under control. You, Asana, are met by um, a figure, that, that figure being Morganeth, who you just turn around having, having, having this wonderful dance and this um, sort of inviting look. Uh, you turn around and she's standing, staring at you with those blind eyes. And I'm sure that gaze will be very disconcerting and will kind of pull me out of my heightened revelry and into something a little bit more serious. Yeah, uh, Morganeth is a, is a serious woman for... A lot of reason. Uh, iron gray hair that's tied in a coiled braid. She has those milky white eyes, deep lines in her face, especially around her mouth and her eyes. She is, she has a reputation as someone who is prudent and nurturing. She seeks harmony and she reaches out her hand to you. Well, knowing her status within 
a Heriborn, especially, uh, and probably even as large as the Colomar, uh, I will kind of bring that energy back down and go to her and put my hand in hers. Yeah, when she grabs your hand, all the energy grounds right out of your body. Oof. What a buzzkill. Okay. And she she pats your the top of your hand and she says, Not yet. Not yet. Soon. But not yet. Your words are wise. I thank you for bringing me back to my senses. And I have shepherded many into the riddle. Your time will come. And I kind of nod my head in reverence. Janira is an inspiration to many. She is blessed over and over. And truly, the magic of life, the energy of life is so strong within her. I... The girdle will amplify it. It is a relic of bygone age. I did not think Dindros had the will to capture it, but Orlanthi men tend to surprise when we least expect them. And during her, as we painted her body in preparation, invoking Arnalda, I could almost sense the magic of the seeds of life within her shining. She will bear many fine, strong children. He is very lucky, though he probably doesn't see it that way. Most men don't seem to from what I've seen from my mother. Well, I again think that Dindros will surprise us. It would not shock me if she bore children this year. He seems strong in his manhood. <laughs> hmm. He could lead a war band at some point. I hate to think of war at a time like this. Though, if it was against the Lunars, I would welcome it. Not enough blood of theirs could be spilt to pay for what they have done. Hmm. I do wish them gone. In time. So I'm going to end with Moana. After the feast has ended, after the dancing has dimmed, after all of your visitors have gone home or to their respective homes, you and your mother do the hard work. The hard work of picking up after a ceremony such as this. Your father is there too, of course as are other members of the stead. Minus Finn, who's likely asleep at this point. But your mother talks often of what it means to be a Hariborn woman and doing the, those things which others do not see. The steadiness that Arnalda, that the earth gives you. Even when children fail to listen, and perhaps imbibe too many spirits or go down to the river and play with their friends. Did you see anyone tonight? Did anyone catch your interest or eye? Oh, the, there, was, there was a lot of nice looking men, boys. Hmm. Many of them are still boys. They have not been through their ordeals. They have not been through, through mine. I am aware. I look forward to it. Your first trip into what lays beyond is powerful. I hope that it I hope that it is a rewarding experience. Oh, I hope so too. I I hope the Earth Mother blesses me with many gifts. Hmm. If you remember our teachings, then she will. Undoubtedly. You've done well today. Thank you, Mother. I, I hope to make you and Father proud. You hope to make us proud. We are proud of you now. We get so little time. 
after you come of age, you will make decisions about where you will go next. Perhaps a ceremony like Janira had today is in your future, and I will be the one here painting your body green. She chuckles. Oh, I could only hope. I I hope to make somebody a, a fine wife and farmer. We will have to see what the future holds. And I think that is where I'll call the second episode of our six seasons in Sartar campaign to a close. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed a festive wedding. And what will follow next are some rather personal items and spotlight episodes for our Harborn. Thank you and good night.